All right. Moving on, let's see what else we got. Home Depot. Lots of chop going on with Home Depot. F cells down today. I'm going to get rid of these lines and see if we can make some new ones. The EMA clouds kind of tell me that we're going to, that we're going sideways. Yeah. I'm going to set an alert on this line for a possible breakout. Nine times out of 10, these alerts, these, these breakout alerts hit. I post them in the, uh, I post them in the trading view alerts channel, but yeah, I mean, they're risky, but a lot of times they hit. Yeah. I had a lot of my alerts go out this week. I hadn't been able to capitalize on them because I've been working a lot, but uh, you had a lot of them go out. Caterpillar, one I really missed out on. I oh, had yeah. Alert. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Baba kind of chopping the past few days, but I kind of, I do like this candle here, though. It's a bullish engulfing with a doji in the previous day. Could signify a reversal. Mm. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, set an alert here. We still got a gap to fill. So, if you were to get in now, betting that it's going to go up, that's you're just straight up gambling. So yeah. we would we would want this to come up break this resistance line show us some volume down here and then we could enter it in on a possible run up and a gap fill let's see oracle down today but still looks like it's bouncing off the 200 ma It was given a $90 price target. We're at 86. Could be a good bounce play, but uh, we played Oracle recently and it was, it gave us, I believe, what was it, 150% or something like that? Yeah. But I think we, yeah, we did. We played that the bounce off the 200 MA right here. We played it up to here and that gave us like 150%. So if we get another bounce off of this 200 MA here, we could see another 150%. Let's see what it's doing today. Kind of on a bit of a downtrend today. We might see some color consolidation. So um, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. Go back to the daily. We almost have a bull or bearish engulfing too. So I'm I'm kind of iffy on that. So I'm gonna watch this for another day. Let's see if it bounces first. Yeah, see if it bounces. See tomorrow if it starts to run up, we might do something with it. If it goes the other way, where's the next support for it? What's that? I said if it goes the other way. With that bearish um, candle there, what's the next support for it? Well, I think the next, I think it, if it bounces down past the 200 MA, then we're going to see a rundown. But if we zoom out, it looks like the next support is right around 
we could probably consider this to be support here. So we got a support here and then we got major support way down here. So if it does continue on its downtrend, we'll probably see it, we'll probably see it hit uh, about $85 or so. Okay, so it ain't that far. No, it's about a two-point move. Okay. All right, GDRX. Broke down past major support. There might be a little bit of support right where it's sitting right now, right around here. See, if we, we zoom way out, we can see a, a trend channel here and we've got, you know, it bounces from the resistance to support. It's been going up and down. And I think this might actually be on its way down, back down to the uh, support. This might not be a bad play for GDRX to the downside. It's already breaking past this. So I'm gonna get rid of that to avoid confusion. Breaking past this, so get rid of that. Don't need this one anymore. I remember when this was upgraded and given a $41 price target, but it's been gone, it's gone down since, which is weird. So it's it seems to be uh disregarding news and um upgrades and just following the technicals. Yeah. So if we were to look at a put play for GDRX. We probably want to go out a little bit farther than. I think this is going to take a while because if you look in the past, it went from the top on September 28th of 2020 to the bottom two months it took. And then when it hit the top again, it took another, let's see, February, three months. Hit the top, October, actually we could consider the top right here. So end of October, I'd probably go a month out if we're going to enter puts on this. So January 21st isn't terrible, but I'd probably go a little bit farther. Probably February 18th sounds good. And when we're looking at a strike price with a put play, the way a put works is that Whatever, whatever your strike price is, is the price that you're saying you're willing to sell this stock at. You, you can sell the stock at this strike price. So if we go by its current price. We're basically locking that price in. So if its current price is $28, $28, we enter a put play. We're saying we can sell 100 shares of this stock at $28, no matter what. So now if it goes all the way down, say it goes like way down to like $19, we still got that contract that says we can sell hundred shares of this stock for $28. That's going to be worth a lot of money. Mm. So let's look at 28. Now 27, five, they don't have a 28. So 27, five is a, $195 a contract. We could almost even go 25 if we're going to go all the way out to February 18th.
25 is all right so i'm going to set the coordinates on this to 25 This needs to be changed to February 18th. This is our price target here. If we hit this line here, we become in the money. That's our price target. Mm. So, I would say we'd go in between the bid and the ask, which would be 95. Let's look at our active trader bar here and see. This is the middle here. This is where it's at. So it's gotten as low as 70 today, and it's all the way up to a dollar for the premium on this contract. If I was to buy this, I would probably set my buy point at 95. This does look really good though. The only problem I see though, is that you see these where it goes down and up and down and up in between. It doesn't just go straight down. It's not like one big red candle that you've got. It's many days and you've got red and green and red and green and red and green. So there's a chance we're going to get some green days in here, which might freak some people out because they're going to see, oh, I entered this call or I entered this put and now we're where it's a green day. And then people freak out and they sell, but they need to realize that like they need to see the technicals. And this is why we go out. This is why we go out so far. And this is what we're seeing. We're seeing a downtrend here. So, I'll look at it on the daily again, or I mean, on the five minute. It's coming down today. I mean, yeah, GDRX puts look good. Let me look at the news. Good RX to present virtually at the 40th annual JP Morgan Healthcare Conference. And that was almost 24 hours ago. No news since then. So nothing spectacular. So yeah, definitely like GDRX to the downside. I'm going to put it on the playlist and come back to it. Okay. AMC, we put out AMC puts. Oh man, you know what? I should check and see what those are at. 415 is what the AMC puts are at. When we put out our AMC put alert, AMC 26P150. Let's just confirm that this is the same one. 26P. One fourteen. Yep, same one. So if we take our percentage calculator here, this is how I figure out percents, guys. So I take my percentage calculator here, and it's, it's going to be the X plus what percent is Y. So we gave out the call at, what did we say it was? AMC put was 150. 
So 1.50, its current price is 415. We're at 176% profit on that. I got to add a little fire emoji. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was a good one. Okay. Hood. Loading, loading. What's going on? There we go. Oh, Hood is breaking down past major support. Oh, this is not good for Hood. Oh, damn. Damn. Why didn't I get this alert? We had an alert set. I didn't get this one. This would have been a good play. It might still be. There's literally, this is all time low. Like there's literally no resistance or no support after this. Like it's, this thing gets, this could drop to zero. There's no buyer's wick at all. Let's look at the daily. I mean, the intraday. Just down, down, down. Mm. The crap is stock. Yeah. I think this is the only IPO I've ever heard of that has gone more than double in the downward direction since its release. Like this, it's halved. One day. Let's see, when it released, it was at what, like 30 something. Let's see. She released like right here. What was it like 34 or something like that? It made an amazing move all the way up to like 70. Oh, 84. It hit 84. Well, that was the initial IPO pump. But since then, it's just been gone down and down and down on a huge downtrend. And now it's less than half of what it started at. That's insane. Hood puts look good too. I bet they're expensive. <laughs> well, they're not too bad. They're actually not bad at all. So we're currently sitting at fifth, almost $16 for Hood. So if we dropped to say, let's see what a one point move would do for us. So if we dropped a 15, a one point move gives us so net 16. One point move gives us a hundred percent. That's 45, here's one point. So, so it goes from 16 to 15 here. $15 puts are 45, $16 puts are 95. So 45 times two is 90. So it's over a hundred percent for a $1 move down. This is a cheaper one. I like it because there's no support. This thing could just fall. Yeah, it'd be put, 
for the small accounts. Yeah, I'm gonna put it out. We'll call it 45. They don't have any news or anything out, do they? Uh, let me look. Uh, Wednesday's biggest analyst call, no. Retail investing at highest since big squeeze. Nothing about Robinhood, no. There's nothing. So we're going to go hood 15, uh, I almost want to say 15.5. Yeah, let's call it 15.5. P. 0 0.445. And that's 114. Yes. Do forty percent stop loss. Hood falling with no support. Let's get this chart for them. How long did it take it to fall in between that channel? I'll let's find out. Put and swing. So there's not really much of a channel here. This is more of a, this used to be support here. And then it broke down past this support. And now this was the new support here. And it just broke down past this support. So, but if we were to create a trajectory, let's say something like this. Oops. I'm going to put this here. We've got until February 18th. If it continues, if it continues on the same trajectory that it went downward in the past before the consolidation, then, you know, we could see it. Oh, geez, it's going to it's going to bottom out and go to zero. But I can't really see hood going to zero, though. No. I mean, it is Robin Hood after all. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really see him going to zero, but uh, we got earnings coming up on February 17th. So I'd be weary of that. Um, there might be a little pump before earnings. They've also announced that they're going to be releasing their wallet soon. That could also cause a pump. So this is probably going to be within the next few days. We're going to be looking for a move on this. Uh, and I would be looking to get out. I wouldn't hold this put very long because I could see this recovering uh, with that news and the earnings. Because Robinhood is going to have good earnings because, I mean, they, are, they're, they, they get pretty much all of the new retail investors. Right. I'm going to enter one of these. Fifteen point five P zero point five. Whoops, that's wrong. I put the fifteen. P premium. This is supposed to be 68. All right. Enter one of these.
See if I can get filled at 67. Yep, all right. Let's see what Kobe's got going on over here. Spy breaking 20 day might get ugly if it doesn't hold. Let's take a look at the spy. Just got an alert on Myrna. Oh yeah, she's breaking down. So I was looking at Myrna earlier and I was going to give an alert. But the reason I didn't is because they're the contracts are stupid expensive. And I know a lot of people in the Discord have small accounts. Mm -hmm. So I got the alert right as it hit right here and it's just been continuing. But if we look at Myrna, Myrna puts are expensive. Even like, so 14 January, you know, we would want a 215 probably or a 210 and it's 800, and, 800 to $1,000 for those for one contract. Even if we went to January 7th, we're still looking at, you know, 500 bucks. So they're just too expensive. But I drew out a head and shoulders here and it looks like it's following that technical analysis and breaking to the downside on the head and shoulders. Hut and coin. All right, I'll check it out, Lewis. Let's look at hut. That is a big red candle. Oh my goodness. Not quite a head and shoulders because we don't have a right shoulder. But that is a very big bearish engulfing candle. Same thing with coin, which makes me wonder what's Bitcoin doing? Oh man, she's falling, dude. It's gonna come down to 40 probably. Ugh. Yeah. This is the only thing that concerns me here about coin is this support right here. It's right at it. Hut, on the other hand, doesn't really have much support until, until about there. And that's just minor support. So for Hut, we're currently sitting at seven bucks. We get about a 75 cent move to the downside. Want to go at least a, two weeks out. Seven bucks, 50 cent move. A $1 move is well, a 50 cent move is 100% almost. It's risky but I like it. You got the 128 contracts for puts. Uh, I like the theta, volume's low. See six dollars by then. Mm. Volume's a little bit higher on the January twenty first, so I like the January twenty first a little bit better though. Yeah, 
You got a call for Hut, Lewis? <laughs> He's a put. Okay. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I like Hut. Coin, I don't like too much because it's right at support. Which it pretty much follows Bitcoin, but still. Sometimes it follows the technicals instead. We'll go ahead and put HUT out. I'm gonna enter it also. HUT, uh, we're gonna say 7P4121. Copy. Go on, bud. Copy the chart. This will be the last play I put out for the day. I don't want to overtrade people. What are we looking at? I'll say 49. Probably get filled at 48. Thirty percent stop loss. What? I'm just going to enter that. Damn. All right. I set a buy order for 12 contracts for 50. It's already going up. So we'll see if it gets filled. If not, it doesn't. Then I'm not going to I'm not going to chase. Sophie's done. Oh my god, MTTR puts. Holy shit. What's the last alert we gave on MTTR puts? All right, so 220, it's currently sitting at 690. Good Lord. Yeah, that's stupid. Two hundred and fifteen percent. I got to put that out. All right. Come on down, Hut. You're not gonna fill me, are you? I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to chase, aren't I? Let's see if I can get filled at 51 instead.
change it to 51. All right, that's as high as I'm going. FTCH. I believe we put out an FTCH put not long ago. Oh, I was filled. Okay, good. FTCH. No, we put out a call actually. A long time ago. Oh, this was shit. This was a long time ago. It's like a month ago. Okay, disregard. All right. Neo is down. Huge bearish engulfing on Dave and Buster's. Like it's it's engulfed the past. Eight bars. So since December 23rd, it's engulfed all of it. Well, most of it. Everything is just down, 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 down. Even Smith and Wesson, which I was expecting it to start filling this gap. Down, Tal is way down, Disney's down, Carvana's down. It's a puts kind of day, my friends. Yeah, I wonder if that's going to last, though. With everything being down this bad, you would think at some point it would have to bounce back and rally hard. It will. It'll, it'll recover, but I don't think it's going to be immediately. I think we'll at least make some money off of our current plays before that happens. <clears throat> Because if we look at SPY, yeah, so SPY made a new all-time high, consolidate, 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 and now it's pulling way back at the end of the day. What is it at now? SPY sitting at 470. Oh, crap. But it's currently right here we have old resistance which could act as new support so it's sitting right at that right if it holds here we could see it kind of consolidate some more and then maybe pop back up but if it breaks down past this old resistance then we could see it come all the way back down here you know we could see a big move so could see a big pullback. Just got to keep an eye on it. What what's the Nasdaq at? Um, mm -hmm. 
NASDAQ, this one. Mm -hmm. 15861. Oh, God. Also like pulling it, back. Yeah, it's been, been pulling back. It, it was holding for a while. Yeah, everything's pulling back. Everything's pulling back today. And since we're mostly in puts, I hope it continues. I know that's right. I'm not biased, you know. I mean, if the if the if the market's gonna go up, we'll get in calls. If it's gonna go down, more power to it. We'll get in puts. We got to play the market. We got to play what the market gives us. Right. So I think that's gonna be it for today. Um, if you guys got any questions, I'll be here. You can you can ask some questions. I can answer them. Otherwise, we'll cut off the stream for the day. I'm not gonna put out any more plays. It's, I don't want people to overtrade sounds good brother i appreciate it absolutely all right later we'll see you guys tomorrow bye bye